Hello there everyone and welcome back to part two of our little Gilai flight here from Leeds to Edinburgh. I just thought we could cut back now because actually behind us there in the distance is the constituency of the right honourable Rishi Sunak. At least at the time of recording it is. Hopefully, um, obviously you, want, you guys will see this post the UK election on the 4th of July. Oh boys, um, hopefully, like I say, hopefully it ends in a in spectacular fashion. Um, but there we go. So now I just thought we'd cut back there. We're still obviously in the cruise. Oh yeah, do 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 in the cruise. You can see there's the coast. That's the Tees River there. Um, the next one will be the Weir, which sort of be behind these clouds, I believe. And believe it or not, G Ogre, which I've got the registration set as incorrectly on this aircraft, is G B I F H. I believe G Ogre is a short 360. Which is on display at the Sunderland Aircraft Museum. Which is... Why did I put so many clouds in? Um, it's north of the Weir, so it'll be sort of this area in front of us. I'll point out as we go past, but it's sort of at the uh, former Sunderland Air Airfield, now Nissan factory. So you can see we're still cruising. We're still cruising for a bruise and we've got plenty of gas on board. We've barely burnt £200 in our flight so far. In a 737 you sneeze and you've burnt £200. It just shows how, you know, what the economy is like, how, you know, how much, how much more fuel efficient these smaller aircraft are. You can see the, the west coast from up here, so that is the Irish Sea over there, that's the uh, Solway Firth. You can see the east coast from up here too, pretty cool, right? Like I say, that's the River Weir. I'm trying to say if that's a river or a roadway. No, that uh, that's the Tyne. I can tell because the mouth, the shape of the mouth of the Tyne. So that's the River Weir. So, Sunderland Aircraft Museums over in this area. Yeah, that's the River Weir. So it'll be sort of over over here somewhere. It's basically being hidden by clouds. But it just shows as well. Actually, what that shows, I know this area really well, like the back of my hand. This is what this is the area I grew up in. I know it well, and it's been very easy for me to get this orientated just because I, I saw a river and went, well, that's the first river. I can't see the other. And the other river is just there, the River Weir. I li my house is literally, uh, let's see where we are again. That's the A1, so it's sort of in this area here. That's where I live. That shows how local this area is to me. I've become disorientated. Any hoozle. Like I said, we are in the cruise. And interestingly, right, I, I obviously skipped the Newcastle VOR because it was just acting as a DME. That's the Newcastle VOR over there. So even by skipping that waypoint, we are within two, three miles of track. So it just shows, especially on short hops, you know, um, navigation isn't that... You basically, I guess, tell your waypoints don't take you that far off track, off just straight lining. I mean, if we straight line, it would be like 20 miles that way. But shush. Um, yeah. It's got a little bit of, sort of... It's not bumpy, but it's just sort of... Not even, yeah, just slight tacking up and down. Which I think is the autopilot more than anything. Um... Which is absolutely fine with me. Just enough to, to make you on the back motion sick. <laughs> um, yeah, so running commentary on the Northumberland coast. Like I said, that's Newcastle Airport. Um, and below us, that's an Army Air Corps base, which is basically drone operation, so you've got to be careful flying around here. Let's see, that's Bladen. Um, it's the A1, so... That's not that's further on the blade than that's thingy. Um that's the Met Rule Centre. I used to work in that area. That's what this here is Metro Centre. That's the Costco. And you've got the Time Bridges that everyone knows, the Time Moor. Interestingly, it's again it's sort of the middle of June, so this this is setting up for the hoppings, which is a large fair group that happens on the ground there. And that is a treat being set up. So it's uh, very sort of close to reality for me, even though we're in the nineteen eighties. Bell bottom jeans and all that. Yeah. Anyway, we'll do a jump cut. We'll see you guys when we're a bit closer to St. Abs. Hey there, folks. Just thought I'd give you a bit more of a running commentary as to where we are. I uh, don't know why I keep introducing it because like, it's seconds for you guys. It's like 10 minutes from me. This is the Cheviot Hills. Let's see. Can I pick out the mountains of Cheviot without needing to resort to notes? That'll be Cheviot. That's Hedgehog. I've been up Hedgehog. I've not been up Cheviot. Um, 
basically it's quite a long walk. I think the nearest missing complete car is like there, so it's quite a long walk up to the top and then back down again. Um, it's like 12, 15 miles. That is um, Eagle Bay, I believe. Well, that's Holy Island. And ahead of us down the coast is Berwick. Fun thing about Berwick, um, well, at least I find it fun, is that uh, Berwick was at war with Russia for a period of time. Basically, uh, the I believe it was the Crimean War. Um, the declaration of war went England, Scotland, Wales, and Berwick. And the, the armistice didn't include Berwick. So they were at war for a period of time. <laughs> it was probably during one of those periods where they were a bit like, is Berwick in England or in Scotland? They've got the accent of both, who knows. But yeah. Anyway, sort of cruising along here. Oh, that look, looks like they're burning some heather off down there as well. Anyway, we're nearly at St. Abs. So, what I'm going to do is, before we do a little jump cut, is just put my course to 274 degrees. This is just to give me something to glance over at during the, the, the turn. And I'm going to initiate the turn in. Uh, what is our DME? DME, rather not in that see, does this work? No. Nope. I mean, it's what we'll do when we get sort of closer to the coast, because I know St. Ab's head VOR is right on the coast. When the coast disappears under the nose, I'm going to switch this over to 274, and hopefully that'll have us tracking outbound heading 274. Um, and that'll uh, fly us in the correct direction. Anyway, um, yeah. Like I say, we'll do the jump cut, and we'll wait basically for that to be about there, and that's when we'll come back. Alrighty folks, we're here. So I've decided I'm just going to take the chance here. And what I'm going to do is set ourselves to a heading, our intercept bug to a heading of 300. Basically we're just going to make our lives a little bit easier here. And then we'll go heading. Zap. And then zap. Just seeing if I can trigger this into doing something. And then 274. Now, we're at 15,000 feet. We need to start dropping down because we will be landing into Edinburgh from the west. So I'm probably taking it a bit too well for myself. We're heading 330. There we go. Now, alt sail will be set for. <coughs> In fact, I'm going to descend. This is why I'm really nervous. I've only got the DME on this side, I can barely read it. That'll do. 10.8, 10.9. Yeah, this will be fine. We're actually intercepting the track. So, we are... We're cutting the corner off a little bit. So, I'm just going to pull power. And we'll go to IAS mode. And then set our alt altitude warning for 5,000 feet. So I was back into the cockpit. <laughs> and I want to do an alt cell for that for six or well, five thousand feet. Now we're descending. I'm just gonna pause just above flight idle so that the aircraft descends quite sharply. But yeah, two and a half thousand feet per minute is absolutely fine because we're descending and we're quite late into the approach phase. Wang the belt up sign on. Um, as well. There you have it. So we're descending at quite a high speed, about 150, 160 knots. This thing, I, I feel like we'll not slow down at all. I'm going to set my airspeed bug again at 110, which is sort of our takeoff speed, so our landing speed. Bear in mind, we've sort of only burned about 500 pounds of gas on this flight, which is insane. Like, yeah. It... Like I say, if this was a 737, we'd sort of be airborne. In fact, we would be getting like low fuel alarms going off, and would be you know, if we if we took off 100 pounds on board. Like I say, it'll be you know, call it 700 pounds, you know, plus a margin that we need for this flight, which is still, if you think how few people are in the back, it's awful for the climate. 
but <coughs> hmm. I'm also used to DCS for think as well like oh I put 15,000 pounds in an hour in my F-16 oh well that's good fuel economy <laughs> yeah you stick an F-16 in the full afterburner you're burning I think 50,000 pounds an hour off of gasolinus so it's uh, yeah Right, we are doing a visual approach once again, so 500 feet of altitude. Seeing it, we're doing echo. No, God. Golf. Uh -huh. No, I've gone past it now. Golf Papa Hotel. Enter. Enter. So you can see it's 278 for 35 miles to run, but that's fine. Yeah, so we are probably a little bit early on the descent, but that's fine. In fact, we're just doing out hold for now. And then set the throttles back up, basically. Keep us, keep us shifting along at 12,000. I would actually just descend into cloud in an aircraft without TCAS, which is massively dangerous, probably. But oh well. Yeah, you can see that that's the bridges there. The airfield's about there. That's Tornes, nuclear power station. Um, that is sort of Grant's house, for those of you who play Train Sim. <laughs> I'm not comfortable with this. This is I'm tracking. No, that's not the bridges. That's on the way up to Dundee. So that way, it's where we'll be flying. Right. I'm just going to do my intercept. Have I blown through the center line? I probably have. Yep, I have blown through the center line of my intercept. Thanks for telling me, guys. God. I'm in the area of instability, so that's fine. Um, we'll just do 274 for now. And then we'll wait sort of 10 miles and figure out where we are. I mean, we can literally fly off nav mode here. There we go. So and I'm still tracking inbound, so I need that to wait. So basically, I need to wait for that to flinch to outbound. So that arrow there says we're tracking toward... Oh, no, we're tracking outbound from the VOR. Perfection. So I'm a little bit south, but that's fine. So what we'll do is we'll just put nav mode on, and that'll then turn intercept again. No, it won't. It needs to be 274. I'm being dumb. I'm being dumb. I'm being dumb, dumb, dumb. Apologies, guys. I'm being dumb. The reason I'm... Okay, fine. There we go. Emily has control. We'll just fly officially. We can. So I'll take a bit of power off and we'll start our descent down. So what other landmarks we got? That'd be Bass Rock. No. That's Bass Rock. Um, that's one of the islands in the Firth of Forth. It's an animal. Sorry, a bird sanctuary now. This is Edinburgh proper. Oh, that's Edinburgh there. Edinburgh Airport is sort of in that area. So it's just off the nose. Probably just... We're going to steer ourselves out over the sea. So I'm going to, the, my aiming point, I've got a mark on my screen, right? And that's what I'm using as my aiming point, which is ridiculous. But um, I'm just keeping that headland there in the same point on my windscreen, at least in terms of left-right axis. So, yeah. I'm just going to fly officially for now. I absolutely love this Airbus Lothian. It, again, it's just stunning scenery if you're on the train. Um... And you're not working, which I'm normally running my metal socks off at this point. Let's see. Next landmark to keep an eye out for, for those of you playing along at home, is the East Lothian Aircraft Museum, or East Fortune Airfield, as it's also the, yeah, well, the airfield portion is known as. There's Dunbar, so it's not that far from Dunbar. 
I'm watching the train line here. It's, that's interesting, isn't it? That there's okay in the line. That is the railway I'm looking at, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the A1 straight lines it, but the railway takes a curve. That's that's fun, that. Do 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 so I'm not sure if I'm looking for an I'm well, no, I am looking for an airfield trip, aren't I? I'm being I'm being the dumb. Let's quickly give it a research. East Fortune. Okay, that helps big time. Um, that's it there. That's East Fortune. So the railway goes a lot further north than I thought. That's the A1 I'm looking at. My apologies, yeah, because that take, take, the railway takes in Drem, Longnidry. All those sorts of places, whereas the, the, the roadway does not. So I'm going to so we're going to tack right. It's interesting, though, isn't it? That like, effectively, we've been flying about 150 miles an hour, 100 and, it's not two miles an hour that this uses knots. So yeah, we know one, one, 130, 140, 150 knots, um, and you know, if we were, oh god, that's a bit too much for the train. Um, that would get about 1500 feet per minute, about 8%. Yeah. Uh, if we were on a train along that, we'd be doing 125 miles an hour, so we'd not be going that much slower than this. You know? But you've got a flight idle. I am giving myself a fairly long extended center line, but I'm also just trying to be somewhat realistic with the flight profile that aeroplanes take. Um, yeah, the extended center line lines up with that. So that is the extended center line. So we'll sort of turn it over. The, yeah, it'll work. It will work. I don't know I'm so willing to comply with me now. Um just look at Sky Vector for the area. Sky Vector Sky Vector in World Sky Yeah, so we are definitely off the track it was suggesting for us to take. I'm just seeing if there's anything I can do. Not really. We'll probably try and figure out an extended turn line based off that, but no, that would just be that's just too complicated. It's too complicated, man. Oh, there's an NDB, perfect, 341 on the um, ADF. I said 341, this one's zero. 34. Let's use the second band there. ADF, yep, so ADF is bang on the nose, boom. We have to trim down and accept that it's going to make it feel uncomfortable. Going, right, I'm just going to hand fly. I'm not going to try and do anything here other than just hand fly the aircraft. Do enjoy. It's one of the places I'd love to go to just casually again. 
I, I, in my last roster, I had days where I'd sit in Edinburgh for four hours. And they were great, because like, I'd just go get, get a frappuccino, go for a walk around Edinburgh, like, um, you know, go sit in the crew room for a bit and just put my feet up. You know. There's the bridges. The oh, so iconic bridges. I think the airfield will be, if I use pedal myself, like this is slight. I have eyes on the runway, I believe. Just sort of hidden behind the post there, which is fine. Uh, hand railing around, you can see the left hand island in front of us. I can't think of a way to describe this to you folks any better. It's that island right there. No, I'm not, I've not got mouse tracking. So the island, so if, if you look at the fourth rail bridge, there's, it's very, Mobius isn't showing it very well, so you may not be able to see it, but I can basically, that's, and that's the important part. Oh no, you can just have to see it, it's sort of the island just underneath the fourth rail bridge. Um, right, power off, no, nope. power off, and then we'll just descend. Just dive, dive, dive. That Murrayfield. That was Swift was on there, that's about all I know about that place. That's about Murrayfield, yeah. Hmm. No, that can't be. That's Craig and Tinney. There's some sort of sports stadium there, also. Doesn't surprise me. Um, the, so, the historical sort of centre of Edinburgh is that area that, yeah, that's that's Waverley. There you go. I know where I am now. So, that's the So, I sort of. Go sit in the crew room. Um, with a frappuccino. If there's any left, or go, go and get a second one if I was feeling particularly sad. Which, let's be honest, this is me we're talking about. Now, 6,000 feet, we are probably fairly high. So I'm going to tack a little outbound. Um, I'm going to drop my gear. Now that we're also approaching the airfield, the landing lights. Now that we are in the now we're going to do our landing checks, so full forward, full forward, and they're both in high idle position. That's in flight idle for now. It's just basically by sticking them into full forward revs, um, by sticking them into full forward, it gives us a massive amount of drag. That's and that'll hopefully help us slow down here. By slow, but all by slow down slash get down basically. So, as the airspeed washes back, yeah, you can see the center line of the runway there. Obviously, I feel it's just off on the left hand side. Let's just get that turn going on. And we'll be flying over the five circle route that we've seen in Train Sim. And train sim world, and well, the line, to, basically the line towards the north, the Scottish East Coast Main Line, as they would like to call it, as we would like to call it. Even. There we go. So we'll take a lump of flat. There we go. Look at that. Just like the doctor planned. So one ten is going to be our landing reference speed. We've got a ways to, to slow down and to come down. But I think we can make it. Trill up a flat. Whoa. It's crazy how much nose down attitude I've got on. It just feels like I'm flying general aviation aircraft, but I know I'm flying an airliner. <laughs> and I've got cabin crew in the back, like that's how big I am. So, uh, yeah. Got a little bit of crosswind, but that's fine. A little bit of crosswind on my side. Do 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 um. See, 
Oh, don't do that. AI traffic is gonna be gonna cook me, isn't it? Yeah, we're entering. Uh, Gale one five going around. Positive rate established under gear coming up. Turning out to the right for separation. You can always go around if they don't look right. I want to fly sort of a loose circuit. I'm going to go slightly high, but I'll also fly over the fourth rail bridge just to show it off to you guys. You may not have seen it outside of train sim yet. If it don't look right, have it down. Sorry, there is a song, if you don't know it, where have you been? Uh, called You Can Always Go Around. Whoa. Doggies. I put my flaps up there <laughs> and it went a bit funny on me. That's fun. Don't know what that is. Alright, I'm going to go gear down just to keep our airspeed in check. And go for a lump of lap two. This thing is surprisingly slick. For being a, a sky brick, it is surprisingly slick. Also, like I say, mobile mobile viewers, you may not have seen the um, uh, aircraft out of the runway there, but it did. I promise. down. We are lower than we were last time, which is good. Oh, this level. Laps to fly, fly idle. Power in. Just to hold that speed. Uh, we're coming down now. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do. There we go. So we're going to land here at Edinburgh. Edinburgh Turnhouse Airport. Formerly known as RAF Turnhouse. Fun fact. It was a transport command base around the war. Feels like I'm not losing airspeed. I can't prove why here. I'm going to descend low, and then watch this for a tactic. This thing ballooned like crazy. I may have just reversed in midair there, but. The May being there for a part there. There we go. We've got a flat idle. We've got a grand idle, sorry. Got flaps up and off. And we'll vacate next left. Oh my god. You know what? I'll never diss a 737 for being like low to the ground ever again. I can't see anything from down here. <laughs> I'm literally sitting up in my seat trying to like look up as best I can. But I don't think that last one was a taxi, I think but no this one is. <laughs> do, 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 do. So just you see the um the little lights on sticks. That made me laugh. Um there's a footage of a B fifty two just uh taxiing in basically because they can crab it. Like crabbing in in along the run runway. 
and they're a bit too far back, so the back ones are just taking out all the real lights. <laughs> and the pilots like head out the window, like, look at me, don't I look sexy as the real lights just exploding behind them. <laughs> um, yeah, that made me happy, okay. So as we do our taxi in, condition levers, propeller, propeller. Um, landing lights go off. Taxi light stays on. We've got a bit of a taxi, a fire, oh, it's a taxi maneuver, bougerie to do today. Oh, look, there's a shorts in postal livery. That is one of my favourite liveries. Anything that's got like an art Royal Mail livery on it is just cool to me. I'll do a quick demo once we stop of what feathering is because I've done it in a few different videos and I've not really talked about it. Um, I know most of you playing it or watching the video will know, but some of you won't. And hey, you may have learnt a thing today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Edinburgh. The local time is 11.48. On behalf of the captain and the crew, I'd like to thank you for flying with Gil Airlines today. I don't know, I don't an accent. It's a fun one to do, I guess. We'll just stop so we are well clear of the air bridge. So there we go. Spooky break. So I'm going to go cockpit camera. Set our park brake. So what we'll do is I'm going to set one throttle to full thing and one to full feather and then I'll chop and chop and no, no ignition, no ignites, no mags, nope, 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 no I don't require a start, so cool, there we go. So as the engines wind down, uh, we'll quickly look at the exterior before we actually fire down properly. Yeah, so one side will stop before the other does. Feathering basically changes the attitude of the blade to the airflow. So you can see the right hand blade and the left hand blade, the, pro the profile is different. Uh, basically the feathered side would be a lot, be a lot easier to notice from side on perspective if it's happened. Just about you can tell that one side's more feathered than the other, basically. If you imagine the blades are paddles, uh, like, like you're sort of in a, boat, in, a, in a boat, and if you want to really like paddle that boat, like so you're, like oars, you're, you're, you're oaring along, um, and you really want to sort of get going, you put those paddles in at a right angle, right, to the water, so that you're pushing as much water behind you as you can. If you put them in so they're actually flat with the water, and you're just sort of make, you're making a lot of splashing. But that's all you're doing. You're not really putting. You're moving very little water, therefore putting very little resistance. Um, and it's basically the same with uh, the aircraft. Uh, I'm just going to knock off the batteries and do it. Actually, no, I want to open doors. Forward. No, not emergencies. Doors. And then stairs. Then baggage. And then baggage. And then cargo. And then belt up sign gets turned off. And Dion, Dion, we'll be doing, we'll be doing, um, where have I put my batteries? Battery, and battery, there we go. So total flight time of 59 minutes, one take off, one landing, there you go. We'll do, just continue to the game, but yeah, basically it's, uh, yeah, but no, overall, really cool little flight, really enjoying the, th the 360 actually. Just shows like it's just different time variation. This wasn't it. Oh, hello. There's an A320 in the, in the rollout. As we've arrived, we've got our cargo door open, all our doors open. We're disgorging our passengers as quickly as we can. Ready to get uh, the next lot on for the flight back to Leeds. Thank you for watching, guys. Like the video if you did. Subscribe to see more from me regularly, and we'll see you in the next one. Until then, bye.